So what is the difference between fields and properties? So if we go back to a lot of the older languages, uh, fields weren't even a thing. Properties were what we originally had. When we needed to create um, a variable at the class level, um, not, as opposed to being inside a method or something like that, mm -hmm. um, we used to create properties. We now can create fields that are a little more lighter weight mm -hmm. and they have a little bit different functionality. So I think the best way to do this is to illustrate. So I'm going to do prop tab tab makes a property. Because you love those shortcut <laughs> keys and I always forget them. Uh, so this will make it, this is a property. Now um, a field um, is just that, correct? Correct. And the getter setter makes all the difference in the world. So a field is pretty raw. It's just like we created a variable and anybody can access that variable. Oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just a variable and assuming that it's public, given the restriction, anybody can access that variable and uh, it doesn't uh, fire anything off. Mm -hmm. uh, a property has a getter and a setter and we can actually, if we need to, trap for those values and do something with them. Mm -hmm. um, now, the way that we normally see properties is we'll see this syntax that you used here where they say get semicolon set semicolon. Mm -hmm. That's actually a compiler trick. So behind the scenes, anytime you create a getter and a setter like that, yep. it's actually creating a field mm -hmm. that you can't see and it names it something irrational in code. Mm -hmm. And when you call that get or that set, which is the read and the write of that property, it still stores it in a field behind the scenes. Okay. Um, do you want to write that out so they can see what that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's actually do one. So okay. let's, uh, let's after, after my field, mm -hmm. let's leave a little more space and let's create a, a more robust full version of a property. Okay. So let's go down after my field. Gotcha. Here? After. So, Here. Yeah, we'll keep the other two at the top. Oh, I see. So we can see, we can compare. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and create a prop here. Mm -hmm. And let's call it uh, property full or something like that. Gotcha. And right above it, we're going to create a field. Okay. To go with it. So we're going to make this one private because we don't want anybody to see it. And let's use the, uh, a lot of times you'll see an underscore put in front of them because they're backing members there. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to explode these get and sets out. So let's go ahead and pull these all off onto their own separate line. We need to put a lot more white space in here. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And let's start with the getter. And we're going to go ahead and do this the full, no, no shortcuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's go ahead and put the curly braces after that with no semicolon. Like this? Yep. And okay. then inside of there, we're going to say return underscore Yep, that one. And we can bring that all down onto separate lines if you want to. That's um, fine. Don't do me. Well, yeah. It may, okay. get, may get a little long here. There you go. And then same thing for the setter. I guess we'll put that up there. Okay. No okay. semicolon? Yep. And this one's going to be the opposite. We're going to say, my, yeah, that one mm -hmm. equals value. And value is a, a special word that only works inside the setter of properties. Mm -hmm. uh, it always has the value that's being set. So if somebody instantiates this class now and they try to set my property full, let's say to five, mm -hmm. that five is going to come in under the value and then we're going to store it behind the scenes in that property field. Mm -hmm. Then what we're going to do is if somebody tries to read my property full, mm -hmm. we're going to retrieve that value again from that private field behind the scenes. The reason to do this is uh, let's say that we want to put a restriction on this field 
and we do not want it to be set to a value less than zero. Okay. Right? So after the getter on line 21, mm -hmm. let's put a new line in. Here? Yep. And let's just say if, I'm sorry, not on the getter, on the setter. I don't know what I'm thinking. No problem, no problem. Yep. On the setter here, let's say if value is greater than or equal to zero. And then let's put that line that we just wrote inside of there. Like that. Yep. So now what happens if somebody tries to set this to negative one, it's just going to disregard and keep right on going. Mm -hmm. We could be even more obnoxious and we could say if value is less than zero, throw exception. Gotcha. And then if somebody tried to set that to a value less than zero, we would throw a value, throw an error. And then... Yep. Throw a new exception. Mm -hmm. yeah. Technically, we should probably use value out of range or something like that, but that'll work for right now. Um, now they're going to get an error when they try to set that to a negative value. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't do any of that with just a field alone. Yeah. And there are other things you can do, obviously not with an int, but I mean, you could return this um, all lowercase or all uppercase, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you wanted to make something, you could set it any way you wanted, but you wanted it to return always in lowercase, you could do that with a property too. It's a way to kind of get in there and inject your code into the reading of a variable. And I guess a field is basically the same thing except for there is no manipulation. Right, a field is just a... Zero manipulation. It's a straight variable and there's nothing you can really do with it. So I know we talked for about seven minutes. If it, what's the, What is an interviewer wanting to hear when they say the difference? What's the rest text now that you know how to do it? I think if an interviewer asks that question, I think you could summarize it up as a property is like a field, but it has a getter and a setter. And there's manipulation you could do where a field just can't have any manipulation. Then. Yeah, and, and they might ask you a little more and you could delve into it, but I think the getter and the setter is really the key. Okay. Um, other thing that might be worth noting is you don't have to have both. Yeah. Uh, and they don't have to be at the same security level either. So uh, a lot of times you'll see a property that only has a getter which means it's effectively read only. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, I don't know why you'd ever have a setter with no getter, but theoretically you could do that too, maybe for a password field or something. Right. Where you can write to it, but you can't read it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you don't have that any kind of security or granularity like that on a field. Once you say it's public or protected or internal, that's all the level of security you have over who can manipulate that variable and what it can be. Yep. Thank you for watching that video from F12 Programming. Please remember to like and subscribe. That does so much for us in the ratings. You have no idea. Also, don't forget to comment below. I hope you enjoyed and good luck coding.